we'll talk about the perspectives of AI in the business environment. So please welcome uh, Peter. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So, uh, <coughs> I'm very honored to be invited uh, and uh, uh, glad to be here. We will see uh, exactly what this talk will be about. Uh, since the talk is taped, maybe I shouldn't say everything that I have planned to say. <laughs> we will see. <coughs> I would like to give you some kind of uh, perspective and um, experience of what it is to be an entrepreneur in the AI business. Um, something more on the kind of the formal side, the administrative side, but also a little bit uh, how it feels and, and what, what is the difference between being maybe a researcher or a researcher with an entrepreneurial side. <clears throat> and uh, I would like to do this, I can do this uh, alone, I would like to do it with my assistant Elvis here, which is uh, a long friend of mine an AI robot that uh, we created as a student project and I started to live it online. Uh, I'll talk more about that uh, in a minute. But first, <coughs> I wonder how to start a keynote speech. And I thought maybe my old friend James Bond has some kind of idea. Maybe I should start with some kind of action to grab attention instead of the normal agenda. So this is an experiment. This is what I'm going to talk about. you should ask yourself if you want to do something entrepreneurial or something industrial, is, is this a good idea? Is this a good timing? <coughs> when you know there's kind of an up and down uh, course of how popular artificial intelligence is uh, as a word. People call it, sometimes call it something else. But right now it's very popular and it's a very good idea. I would say that it's uh, probably Maybe I'm not complete, completely unbiased, but it's probably one of the best things that you could try to start a business with. Maybe it's even a little bit overheated. <coughs> Here's a very recent copy of American Wired, and it says artificial intelligence is here, but it's not quite what we expected, which I will talk about also. And the funny thing is, if you go to Google, or if you go to Amazon, or if you go to Oracle, if you go to IBM, and ask them, what are you really doing? 
they will all answer the same thing, which is kind of surprising but interesting. We are an artificial intelligence company. And maybe with Google, you can understand that. Amazon is a little bit different, but if you see the, the direction they are taking, it's, it's more and more um, obvious that they are thinking like that. So artificial intelligence is kind of hot, which is good if you're going to start a business. <coughs> People are looking for you. And there is a, right now some kind of a mini IT boom, which is also good, at least it's starting now. It's always good to start to surf when the wave is building up. So we have most of our developers in, in Tallinn, in Estonia, and uh, our next door neighbor is Skype. And you may have heard this, they were sold for 80 million Swedish crowns or something like that. Yes, two or three years ago to Microsoft. <clears throat> and, and when you hear about these news that things are being sold and bought and, and, uh, and so on, you, uh, you can listen to that and see if maybe there's some kind of sign of times. The next question, why should you listen to me? And I have, of course, no idea uh, how to answer that, but I kind of felt that I had some experience in starting companies. I started around 25 companies for being co-founder co, uh, co or, or involved in that companies. If you're an AI entrepreneur, it's, it's not like being a doctor or being where you know that you're, you have a diploma and you know that this is your identity. You kind of <coughs> surprise yourself and say that, okay, I've actually done a few companies. It's kind of easy to get in contact with big companies around this if you know what's, what's uh, of interest in the field. And we have worked with, with many companies in, in Sweden and in Scandinavia, but also in the US. And uh, we have uh, in, in Finland, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and in the Baltic States. I also worked in, in the US with the uh, Department of Defense and other big contractors, FMA and Sweden, and so on. <clears throat> Next question, why start five companies? Uh, my usual answer at least is that I started out as a, an evolutionary algorithm researcher. Genetic programming is, is what it was and maybe is called, uh, where you induce and evolve <laughs> programs in a sense. And at least my, my pitch when I meet people <clears throat> outside of research is that it's kind of like automatic programming. Uh, you can, uh, instead of, if you have some small problem, instead of having a human programmer, you can evolve it. Um, it's a little bit like if you have a wolf and you want to have a Paris Hilton dog, you can use breeding. That's a live dog to, to, to the right, by the way. Uh, you take a number of wolves and you see which one of these wolves is most similar to a Paris Hilton chihuahua. Ah, oh, these two, and you let them mate, and then you get new woods, and you continue for some thousand years, and then you end up with a chihuahua. And it's a surprisingly fast process. You can, our pigs have got an extra rib in, in just 40 years, and, and uh, it's not like evolution, which is slower usually when you are breeding and are selecting very specifically in your posture. And so, my usual explanation for the schizophrenic number of companies is that uh, so this is a very general technique and you can say that even if you have another general technique and most techniques are very general you can say um, well, you can use this in many many different areas you can use it in image processing, you can use it for reasoning you can use it for uh, genome processing autonomous agents, a lot of things and no investor and no customer will understand you or believe you if you say that. So it's much better <coughs> to actually be kind of niche and say, now I'm solving this problem. And uh, the customers and the investors will be much more, more happy then. And I spent some 10 years watching evolutionary systems. And at least it's a good story that I kind of learned from them. If you know this kind of uh, chaotic ad adaptive system, stay, you need diversity. You cannot get uh, good optimization if you, if you get caught in a uh, local optima. 
you must kind of recombine between different ideas and different situations. So if you have more than one company, you can recombine persons and ideas and, and, and insights. Mutation is good, I think. Many, many uh, great ideas. The uh, prices has come from someone that's sloppy and, and spilled uh, uh, fungus into a bacteria dish or something. That saved uh, 100 million people lives uh, by planning with that. So mutation is a little bit around and all of the companies come from some kind of board of the population. You need many candidates. Uh, a little bit safer, not all of the eggs in one basket. To study this kind of systems, uh, you will see that you need, of course, speed. You need uh, to do things, and uh, it's still good to rank, to select, and to prioritize. So, if you're a researcher and want to try AI entrepreneurship, consider the population. Especially if you have your position uh, in the university in Sweden, we have this very luxurious uh, situation where you have all the rights to your research. So you can spin off a few companies. And to summarize how you should commercialize your technique, do it in thin slices. <laughs>